I knew the ocean was around me, though I could not see it. I was in total darkness. No, there were tiny chinks of light between the boards. But I could smell the sea, salt and strong in my nostrils. In the beginning, there are two of us. He in the box next to mine. Our boxes were tied down by heavy ropes onto the deck. The wind rose, the sailors rushing, yelling, their feet pounding the deck. The ropes screamed, our boxes slammed together, and I am thrown against the side of the box. Days, nights, on and on, will this never end? Days, nights, I can hardly tell which was which. At first, I can hear him snuffling beside me in his box. I would answer, and back and forth we'd go, each in our darkness. One day, I heard his breathing so fast, his hooves beating against the walls of his box. He's down, poor fellow. Got to get him up on his feet. Here, give us a hand. Oh, oh well, too late. I could hear the sailors straining and pulling. Easy, easy now. One, two, three, heave, ho! I could hear the splash. I knew I was alone. Days and nights and on and on. Sometimes I smell rain. Hear it above the howling winds, the raindrops pounding close over my head. And always the creaking and rocking. Sometimes at night, I think it is night. When the sea is calm, I hear the sailors singing. Suddenly, whistles, screams. Hey, would you look at that crowd? And a band playing. Look, there's King George and Queen Charlotte. Where, where? In the carriage. Bam, bam. I am lifted up and dropped and lifted and dropped on something solid. Here she comes, they're bringing her out. The sunlight blinds me. The awful breath of so many people. The noise, I am terrified. Well, I'm she the main one, plunging and biting. A present for the queen, eh? All the way from Africa. I thought there were two of them, stallion. Died on the sea voyage, colic, you know, when you keep them cooped up like that. Mummy, who painted stripes on that horse? Hush, who? Well, child, God did. Bam! I'm in another box. Buckingham House! The royal moves, make way, make way. I am being pulled by big dark ones. I hear their hooves striking stone. Open the gate into the paddock. Careful, she'll bite you. Now let her go. <laughs> Look at her go. I can see sky. I feel grass underneath my feet, under my belly. Would you look at that? She's rolling in it, side to side. And I can run, not far. Walls stop me, men stop me. And then the people come, day after day. <clears throat> We're here to see Her Majesty's zebra. <laughs> no, Jack, we've come to see the Queen's ass. Well, isn't she the bad-tempered one, showing her teeth and snapping? I think she's pretty. <laughs> For an ass! Listen, it isn't every day we get to see the royal pot, I. <sighs> More hooting and laughing. One day, there are no crowds. She's there. Um, not too close, ma'am. <laughs> Especially in your condition. Uh, uh, begging your pardon, Majesty. She's a bit unpredictable. Paul? Little horse, little striped horse, far from home. You would like for not to be cooped up. You would like for everyone to stop laughing at you. 
You would like to go home. I also. She turns. One day, two men are watching me, not laughing. George, I think you should paint her. I've never painted a wild animal. But you know horses. Your horses are superb. Those stripes. Awfully loud. The royals would pay for such a painting. Why, just last week, on William's regular medical visit. Oh, how is Queen Charlotte? My brother says she's young and strong. She'll make an amiable patient. She'll bear the first child easily. But George, think about this. The queen loves animals. And the zebra, her very own, think of it. Your painting could hang at the Royal Gallery at Buckingham House. The one called George, he comes back. He looks up at me and down and scratches something on something square and flat. <sighs> what shall we do with those stripes, my friend? They are so, so uncompromising, so strong. Like you, I think, little zebra. I don't mind the scratching. It's steady and small. I don't mind his gaze. I think I am going to put you in a forest, little zebra. Yes, yes. Soft green shadows with dappled sunlight on you and around you. You will be happy in a forest, little zebra. I'm used to him now. I wait for him. One day he comes, he looks at me and puts a flat thing under his arm. <sighs> I think this sketch will do. I will finish your painting in my studio. Goodbye, little zebra. I don't see him again. The crowds come back. More hooting and laughing and singing. A sight such as this surely never was seen. Who the deuce would not gaze on the ass of a queen? Those squeamish old prudes with Invictus and spleen might turn up her nose and censor the queen, crying, Oh, what a pity the queen should, alas, should take so much pride in exposing her ass. My poor little friend. Can you bear it? I cannot bear it. My husband, the king says, Charlotte, this has nothing to do with you. This is about politics. You should never worry your head with politics. But the awful laughing, the awful singing. I wish sometimes I could just disappear. I wish sometimes they would just forget about me. We? Oui? could disappear together, little zebra. No, I cannot disappear. I am, I am the queen. They took me from the grass. They took me from the sky. I am back in a rolling box. The crowds are smaller, but louder and closer. I can't remember days now. I don't remember nights. And there are other animals caged up like me. Well, John, I have finished my little zebra. Very to the life, do you think? What do you think of my painting? Uh, I am afraid, George. You don't like it? Uh, the painting is fine. The subject, the zebra herself. The royals are not pleased. Too much of an uproar, if you know what I mean. What have they done with her? Oh, gave her to old Pinchy Pinchback, the clockmaker, a friend of the king's, or perhaps they sold, him to, sold her to him. Anyway, she is now a part of a traveling menagerie. Lions, tigers, and your little zebra. And the painting? 
I am afraid, George. They, want, they don't want to be reminded of her. The lewd jokes and songs. They just want to forget. They won't buy my painting. I'm afraid. I'm sorry, George. All right. I'm sorry you spent so much time. I'm not. What will you do with her but it? I may show her at Academy and then, and then you'll go on to other things. You've proven you can paint from the wild, George. You can do anything. And then I'll keep her at my studio. And then, one day, I lay down in the rolling box and closed my eyes. I could not hear the shouting anymore, nor feel the awful jerking and rolling. I was no longer in the box. I was in a soft, shadowy world, and I was free. Well, little zebra, you will always have a home in my painting. Someday, people may pass by, stop and look at you. They will see you standing in pools of sunlight in my dark forest. I think they will not laugh. They will think how delicately you are poised, how alert your eyes and ears. They will look into your eyes and think, what are you thinking, my little zebra? Perhaps you are dreaming of Africa. I am dreaming of the high mountain places of my childhood, of the wide sky above my head. I'm dreaming of clattering down rocky paths, racing, my head stretched forward, the wind in my nostrils, keeping up with the others, following my mother, sure-footed, wild, and safe.